the next speaker, which is Yuri Wolkov, um, who will talk about um, uh, multifunctional nanoparticles for imaging in cancer cells. And uh, Yuri is from uh, Dublin, Ireland. Uh, thank you for coming and giving a presentation. Thanks a lot for the uh, invitation and uh, also thanks to the organizers. They've uh, nicely put this very busy session, but uh, they've been presentation by uh, Wolfgang in terms of uh, production of uh, fantastic properties, nanoparticles, as well as Kenneth's uh, uh, discussion about the uh, of target effects of nanoparticles. We happen to be the members of the same European consortium. so. Keeping in mind that you're all extremely tired now at this stage, so I might omit certain things which have already been covered in this talk. So thanks to the organizers for wisely put in this, uh, in this uh, context. Uh, so, uh, so I'm trying to, to focus on the, on the really targeted application of, uh, of advanced nanomaterials for the benefit of the, uh, of the patients. So uh, while we're all here, because we... Uh, all have the common drive. We need to get certain issues uh, uh, sorted uh, for the patients. And uh, nanomedicine is long overdue on many fronts uh, to the patient, despite the uh, significant investment being, ma uh, being made in this area over the past years. So, uh, uh, and in terms of particularly in terms of nano uh, diagnostic nano tools, the grand challenges uh, still uh, exist, and uh, we need to tackle really major diseases. And uh, uh, in, on this front, the uh, effort should be undertaken by the key scientists in the area. Um, there is still uh, uh, not sufficient uh, sensitivity and uh, informativeness of the of the assays, and uh, we really can tackle disease prior to its uh, onset. Uh, um, Preferably, we would like to target and to design the de devices should be compact and easy to use, keeping in mind the point-of-care diagnostic uh, systems. Uh, they should be cheap, um, accessible to the patient, and uh, safe in the, in the operation modes. So along these lines, uh, if thinking about the major diseases, uh, what we decided to tackle within this uh, European consortium of scientists, of course, was uh, cancer. And uh, if you look at the global picture and then European one, uh, there is a worrying statistics. There is uh, three forms of cancer that are still on the forefront, and they are occupying the uh, three out of four uh, major places uh, within the Western, Northern, Central, and Southern Europe. So the trend is the same. Uh, so therefore, within the consortium, we decided to uh, to tackle those types of cancer and uh, selected them as the, uh, the targets for the uh, molecular and cellular diagnostic uh, detection. So the project is called NAMDIATREAM uh, and stands for the Technological Toolkits for the Multimodal Cancer Diagnostic and Treatment Monitoring. Um, it is uh, keeping in mind that we need to put the major effort on it. Uh, that's a confirmation that the major effort has been indeed uh, undertaken. It's 22 partners uh, from all over Europe, uh, including academic uh, and research centers, uh, high-tech SMI, uh, small and medium and size enterprises, multinational companies and uh, from over 20 areas of technological and 13 areas of scientific discipline. So we're trying to uh, get sorted first issue to increase the sensitivity and informative value to detect early problems prior to the disease onset. So what nanotechnology has to offer on this front? Uh, there are some opportunities. First, the uh, multicolored nanoprobes, uh, including uh, quantum dots, give us a perfect opportunity for the getting ultra-bright signals and uh, practically unlimited uh, multiplexing or multiplymetic uh, multi diagnostic assays, which is essential to increase the uh, assay inform informative value. Then uh, there is a very interesting feature is that those small uh, uh, structures such as nanomaterials could uh, ensure precision targeting and uh, also unprecedented levels of the cell and tissue penetration and uh, Sometimes that they can play around uh, at the level of the nanometers, and you can get the mm, selective accumulation of particles either just at the cytosol or just the, in the over the cells or in the cytosol perinuclear area, or just going straight to the nucleus, depending on the size specific uh, uh, cutoff, um, which is extremely valuable for the uh, diagnostic uh, ex vivo diagnostic issues uh, in, in tissues. So, having said that, uh, we've uh, in incorporated the 
best possible uh, advances of the nanotechnologies uh, offered in the European institutes. And uh, at the moment, it uh, could be summarized uh, as uh, four complementary and uh, advanced, uh, advanced technology platforms uh, within the project. Uh, one of them is based uh, on the opportunities uh, exploiting the photoluminescent nanoparticles and quantum dots, and uh, this will be uh, implemented uh, in the lab on a chip and uh, lab on a bead assays. Uh, another field uh, is the exploitation of the properties of nanorods for plasma and optical uh, detection. And uh, uh, depending on the uh, particular uh, orientation of those uh, nanorods in the uh, for, for in the biological context and the, in the assay medium, and depending on how much protein they bind, uh, they can produce uh, different signals, and uh, which is extremely beneficial for the uh, homogeneous uh, um, immunoassays. The third breakthrough direction is the exploitation of the second harmonic generating nanocrystals, or sometimes they're called non-centrosymmetric uh, nanocrystals. They could be extremely small. The choice of uh, uh, of those uh, materials is, uh, is extremely wide. Uh, most of them uh, have uh, beneficial properties that are not uh, extremely toxic for the cells, and uh, the signals could be uh, generated from very deep uh, locations within the tissues. Well, finally, uh, there is the exploitation of the properties of the magnetic, uh, magnetically barcoded uh, nanocarriers. Well, uh, the project is uh, it's huge, and uh, of course I won't be able to, to give you even the the flavor of the advances of each of those technology platforms, but uh, we'll probably try to um, uh, get at least some features of, of, of uh, the advances uh, based on the optical and magnetic properties of nanomaterials, and uh, keeping in mind that uh, uh, we're trying to develop very compact and easy to use devices, which would be very similar, very simple for understanding for the perception of the patient. From that point of view, I would like to introduce to you the concept of the molecular uh, supermarkets, uh, which is uh, and the, uh, the basis of this magnetic optical detection of cancer molecules. Uh, so let's get uh, to the everyday life. Everyone is familiar with the, with the barcodes. These barcodes enable us to uh, pick up the goods in the supermarket from the huge variety assortment of those goods to pick up only those which are of, of interest. And we sometimes we don't even know what the product is, but we just scan it and uh, everything's simple and there is no confusion and we get the right product at the till. Well, sometimes it's not very easy, despite the fact that uh, the barcodes are everywhere and there could be confusion, but uh, if you transfer this into the molecular context, now we have, uh, here is the supermarket. These are the bloods, it could be zero of the patients. And uh, um, a number of molecules, including the molecules of interest, are floating there in those, uh, in those blood tubes. So if you would like to pick up the molecules of, target molecules of interest, uh, we need to create the barcodes which would be suitable um, at the size uh, uh, of, the, of, the, of the respective molecules of interest. So the barcodes should be, of course, reduced and uh, the uh, and something like this would be from, from this. And so the, um, ideally, we should put them on some nanostructures as well, encode those nanostructures according to the, um, uh, to the uh, target molecules of interest. Well, uh, thankfully, the, uh, the scientists can now produce, and these are the variety of those uh, uh, magnetically barcoded structures, and uh, we could choose uh, those which you would like to have and uh, then uh, subsequently uh, tag them to the... Uh, uh, capture molecules which will be uh, picking up the uh, target molecules of interest from the biological liquids. I'll probably show you a brief movie how it's all uh, conceptually how this works. Uh, so just imagine we are uh, in that, as I said, molecular supermarket. We are just diving into that uh, uh, tube with the blood and you've got the few proteins floating there, target A and target B, that could be cancer biomarkers, and we uh, put, mix it with the solution of the nanowires which consist of the magnetic and non-magnetic segments, so literally these are your supermarket tags, these are the molecular barcodes. Uh, on the surface of the wires you've got the antibodies which uh, enable to pick up the molecules of interest from the, uh, from the test tube. And uh, 
Once those functionalized wires are interacting with the, with the molecules of interest, of course you get the interaction with the targets and the target proteins uh, stick uh, specifically uh, to the um, antibodies of, uh, 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 which are present on the surface of the particular nanowire of a particular type. But okay, so you've got the, your molecule of interest tag, but you, you'd like to know also how much of that molecule sits on each wire. So there where you introduce the uh, secondary label and by optical readouts, depending on how much of that fluorescent um, emitting uh, label is sitting on the wire, you can set how much of the target molecule you have picked up. So in ideal case scenario, it could be the uh, quantum dots again, which already been introduced nicely by uh, Wolfgang in the, previous, in the previous talk, so you can use them as secondary labels. And so, so subsequently you run it through the uh, uh, oriented flow uh, device and you get an idea of the, uh, the magnetic sensor of uh, which targets are floating, uh, are flowing uh, across, the, across the channel depending on number of segments. So you can say that in this case, for example, that was the uh, target with two segments at nanowire of type B compared to the previous type 1. And then very simple optical detection, don't need any strong lasers, just by fluorescence, by the amount of fluorescence, you know how much of the target sitting on the nanowires A and B. So, uh, of course, and uh, that's uh, continuously uh, uh, could be applied to, uh, to many devices, including flow cytometer or to high throughput diagnostic devices as well. <coughs> so, is it all realistic or only conceptual? Yes, it is. It is real. So, and you can build those nanowires uh, using those uh, alumina templates, uh, and uh, you can produce actually very nice nanowires. And see here, they're. Uh, consist of the alternating magnetic and non-magnetic segments and could be used uh, built from materials like cobalt, nickel uh, and uh, gold, platinum which produce the non-magnetic uh, segments there and this is the higher magnification of the wire which uh, is uh, comprised of the magnetic uh, segment and the, also the uh, gold spacer as well. So it is realistic, physicists can do this it's very important to integrate with this, to, fun uh, to functionalize them using the advanced uh, chemical approaches. So uh, now, uh, if you get the wires, uh, what would be the det detection system? It should be reasonably cheap. So magnetic principle, very good. Nothing could be cheaper than that. But all you need to create the magnetic sensor, which would be miniaturized enough to read those barcodes, uh, picking up the molecules of interest. And so this sensor has been created, actually this is the photograph of the uh, realistically existing uh, miniaturized magnetic sensor and uh, it looks like that, so this, uh, compared to the size of, the, of one cent coin and uh, the sensor can give the readout of the single nanowires at the moment. Likewise, uh, as I said, second optical label gives you a chance of uh, quantifying the amount of the target of interest and uh, this is the examples how the one of the cancer biomarkers, uh, RB2, is detecting using those uh, functionalized uh, uh, barcoded nanowires by flow cytometer as well. So optical approach also works. But having said that, and uh, thinking about the uh, more uh, advanced applications of those uh, nanomaterials, once you get those wonderful fluorescent uh, uh, quantum dots, uh, you can also use them not only for the molecular detection, but the detection of the cancer at the cellular level. And so uh, they give uh, wonderful, absolutely, properties if they're uh, combined with uh, uh, unique antibodies as well. And these antibodies are produced by these lovely animals. Uh, it's the family of camelids, and these are llamas. And so llamas produce the antibodies which are single domain antibodies, and uh, they're much smaller than the conventional antibodies. So in combination with the, uh, with the ultra-small uh, nanoparticles such as quantum dots, they become, compared to the... Uh, conventional available uh, antibodies and quantum dose conjugates to this hydrodynamic diameter, so it'll get around 10, whereas the conventional one would be over 30. So therefore, you get an advantage you can deeper penetrate into the tissues, probably pick up the signal from the single individual cancer cells located uh, within the tissue and so from the places where it's very hard to penetrate for the <coughs> usual, usual regions. And these are the examples. Uh, of the work carried out in, by our partners in Max Planck University. They've got the orthotopic breast uh, tumor model at this stage, and uh, this is excellent signal provided by the tissue, uh, from the cancer tissue by the single domain antibodies conjugated with quantum dots, and you see here it's, a, it's extremely bright and uh, it's far outperforming the conventional commercially available similar um, fluorescently labeled uh, antibody as well. 
So it doesn't, it, not, it works not only on the immunity model, this is the first applications in the, in the clinics on the, on the samples of patients with different uh, status of this uh, um, breast cancer HER2 marker uh, as de uh, designed by the pathologist. And so we can pick up the good signal from the locations even as, de as deep as 30 uh, micrometers uh, and, uh, and currently even deeper than that. And if you have a look at the video of that, uh, of that sample, it just stack uh, confocal uh, video, so you can see the nice uh, isomer structure of the of the uh, mm, of the breast uh, tissue over here. So that's uh, uh, it's very deep and very intensive staining of the whole tissue throughout, which express the HER2 uh, marker as well. So this is the uh, group which contributed sufficiently to the to the progression of this work. Uh, Ever sunny Dublin. If you haven't been to it, uh, you'll see it uh, for yourself when you come next time. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, nothing would be possible uh, uh, within uh, uh, this uh, project uh, if it weren't for the joint activity of uh, many partners with excellent, excellent industrial drive, which will ensure implementation of these results at the end. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for this interesting topic. Uh, other questions from the audience? Uh, I, I would have a question. The um, standing in the tumors you showed that was based on sections, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so it would not work out to have something like this for in vivo applications? Of course, uh, thinking about the uh, quantum dots, you wouldn't. Uh, you wouldn't be inclined to, to rush into the in-view applications. But uh, I think uh, in, the, uh, in the limited, uh, f very fast-performing uh, diagnostic assays, which uh, if they require tiniest amounts of those reagents, uh, like the uh, diagnostic in the, f f at the operational in the surgery table or something like this, I think potentially it could be used, especially if I'm thinking about the cancer cells, which should be killed anyway. So. Uh, uh, we'll explore this on the animal models first, and then we'll make firmer con conclusions about this. Yeah. It could also be an interesting technique, technique for uh, monitoring circulating microRNAs. Yes, 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 indeed, yeah. They are uh, high in, in course in terms of cancer diagnostics as well. Yeah, if, uh, it's, uh, well, the, uh, what I presented here is, uh, is, of course, it's a very tiny part of the, of the project activities, and uh, many things will be developing uh, beyond the, uh, the terms and the scope of the regionally planned program. So this is the advantage of the uh, trans-European collaboration. Okay. Thanks. Thank you again, then. Uh